Hello, everyone. Welcome to our World Environment Day live stream. We are very happy that you are all here today and able to partake with us because I'm really excited about what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but who am I? My name is Janelle. I'm here from the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority and I'm here down near the beach near my house. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in just a little bit. But before we get into our live stream, a couple of things I wanted to go over. First of all, I'm not alone here. This is not a one woman show. I'm here uh, with my friends. Uh, Sarah, who's going to be in the background, uh, helping sort of direct all of this. Uh, also, Catherine and Jasmine. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> uh, Catherine and Jasmine are going to be in the chat, uh, hopefully answering all your questions or any comments that you have um, along the way. So speaking of, if you are listening and you have any questions or comments for me um, and my team at any point, feel free to drop them in the chat uh, and we'll make sure that we get to them. If not, midway through then sometime by the end of by the end of the live stream we'll do all of our questions and answers now this live stream isn't uh just right here right now uh your teachers can also uh download a uh worksheet that goes along with this um with this live stream uh the link is going to be put into the chat if you're interested in that and it looks something like this uh, so you're more than welcome to request one of those and get one of those to uh, to test your knowledge about what we're going to be learning about today. So let's get into it. What are we going to be learning about today? Well, if you didn't know by the name of this live stream, it is World Environment Day. So happy World Environment Day. What is World Environment Day? So World Environment Day uh, is a globally recognized day uh, that uh, the United Nations so over 150 countries across the world recognize in trying to get businesses, communities, individuals, corporations all together thinking about the planet that we live on and how to make that a healthy place, not only for the planet, but for everyone and everything that lives on it. So this, every year they have different themes about what, the, uh, what World Environment Day will focus on. But today, millions of people across the globe 150 countries are thinking about plastic pollution. And uh, the theme this year is hashtag beat plastic pollution. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of an ecosystem or a habitat and why we want to really think about how we can reduce our plastic uh, because plastic may have a negative impact on our environment. And we're going to be talking about whether or not it, it does and, um, and what we can do to stop that. So let's take a little bit of a walk around where I am and sort of talk to you about the ecosystem or the habitat that I am in. So a habitat is just a place where things live and they have everything that they need to live. The place where I am right now is Frenchman's Bay in Pickering. Now, Frenchman's Bay, uh, I do have a picture of it because I wasn't able to get up to the wetland today because of some construction. Uh, but Frenchman's Bay is a wetland area that sort of Dufferin Creek empties out into uh, before it makes its way to Lake Ontario. So you'll see behind me, beautiful Lake Ontario and the beach here. Uh, but Sarah, if you could bring up the picture of, uh, yeah, that is Frenchman's Bay. So we are looking south is at the top of the picture there. Uh, but you can see all these houses and even at the bottom of the picture, that's Highway 401, or sorry, that's not, that's uh, Kingston Road, but just beyond that Highway 401 is there. So you can imagine how important this wetland is in order to filter all of our water from these neighborhoods before it gets into the lake. Now you'll also see there's sort of like a little bit of a, a like a barrier between Lake Ontario and Frenchman's Bay. That makes it so that Frenchman's Bay is the ideal habitat for so many different animals. Uh, what do you think could live in Frenchman's Bay that we maybe wouldn't see in our neighborhoods or every day walking around? You can take the picture down if you want. So I'll let you answer in the chat. What do you think we can find in Frenchman's Bay? Well, as I'm here in front of the water, I'm going to try to turn my camera around and Hopefully you'll see oops, some of the birds that we can find here at Frenchman's Bay. So let me turn my camera. There we go. You can see 
Lots of seagulls flying around the water. These are just some of the birds here. But we can also find things like swan, geese, ducks, lots of different waterfowl. And one of my favorite ones is actually it's too far away right now, but it was flying a lot closer. And they have one of the funniest calls that I think, because they're just little, little water birds. Um, but it is a tern. And they are little and they are cute and they look so like majestic and um, and like proper. And they sound like this. Ah! <laughs> it's not a very nice call, but there are lots of terns here as well. And they're a very important creature uh, that we have here. But not just birds. What else can we find in the water? Frenchman's Bay is actually a really good place to do fishing. So there's lots of fish around here as well. Uh, lots of different types of fish that all these birds are eating, but also that people could eat as well. And apart from that, there's also right all around the bay, there's tons of forests so that lots of different reptiles, like our snakes um, and turtles can call home, uh, but also amphibians like frogs and toads call home as well. Um, but also, we're forgetting some of our biggest animals that live around here are mammals. So things like deer and beavers and, I mean, squirrels are always around and chipmunks. Uh, but there's lots and lots and lots of different animals that are supported by this ecosystem all around here. So we know that this habitat is important for all of these things to live in. Uh, but also, this place is excellent for recreation. So people come down. Uh, they get cool by the beach, they, uh, they come out and enjoy themselves, they sit down, they relax, all sorts of things. So this place is extremely, extremely important for a number of different reasons. Um, not, and we talked about how French Bay cleans our water, all these trees around me clean our air. So this habitat needs to stay healthy. Um, but we're talking about plastics today. So how do plastics how are they related to what we we're just talking about and our habitat and our ecosystems? Well, I want you, let's switch our focus a little bit to plastics. I want you to look around where you are right now. And, and I'm gonna give you about five seconds. I want you to count how many things are made of plastic, fully or partially made of plastic. I'm gonna give you five seconds right now to just count. Okay, in five seconds, how many things did you see made of plastic? Now, I'm out at the beach. I'm not even in a building or anything, but just looking around me, my phone case is made of plastic. The gimbal, the thing that's holding my phone is made of plastic. The tripod that I'm using is made of plastic. Uh, there's a porta potty over there made of plastic. There's plastic in my clothing as well. So a lot of our clothing is actually made with plastic fibers, if you knew that or not. But there's plastic all around me. We use plastic all the time for so many different things. And it's convenient. We can make it into so many different shapes and colors. It's fairly cheap to make. Uh, we can throw it away easily. Um, we can keep them for a little longer if we need to. We can move it because it's light. Plastic was convenient. It is convenient. However, there's a problem with plastic. Because it's so disposable, we often dispose of it. We get rid of it. And when we get rid of it, we get new plastic. And when we make new plastic, we get rid of it, we get new plastic. Our plastic production is the problem. We make too many things of plastic, made with plastic. And plastic is not a natural material. It's not made of things like things like trees or wood. It's made from petrochemicals, so oil, fossil fuels, that people have to take out of the ground in order to process to make into plastics. So that process alone is not good. But then the plastics themselves, because they're not made with natural things, when we throw them out, they don't break down easily. So we call that biodegradation or biodegradable. They're not biodegradable. 
they stay in our environment for a very, very, very long time, um, and they cause a lot of problems. So that was a little bit of a background about plastic. But let's test your knowledge and see what else you know about plastics. I have a bit of a true and false game here for you to see how much you know about plastic. So my first one is true or false, once discarded, so once you throw away a plastic, plastic just stays wherever you put it. So if you put it in the garbage, it just stays in that garbage. If you throw it on the ground, it just stays where you put it. Is that true or false? Think about it for a second. And feel free to answer in your classroom. You can put up hands. You can talk about it a little bit. True or false, once discarded, plastic always stays where it is. And teachers, if you have some answers, feel free to put them in the chat. We'd love to know what your class thinks. So, are you ready for the answer? This is false. So we know that plastic moves around, although it's not a living thing. Wind, water, animals, or even people can move plastic waste um, and it can end up in places where we would not expect it. So it's estimated that 19 to 23 million tons. Think of that, million tons. I can't even think of that. That's an, an amazing amount of plastic. Um, is leaked into aquatic ecosystems or places like Lake Ontario globally um, each year. That's a ton of plastic that's making it into our environment that doesn't really break down. Okay, let's do another question. True or false? Plastic can take thousands of years to degrade or break down in the environment. What do we think? Plastic can take thousands of years. Now, I already mentioned that plastic doesn't really break down, but I guess it does break down, but does it take thousands of years? Maybe it only takes 20 years, 30 years, 100 years? Hmm. Let's see. So, true or false? This is true. It's true. Plastic, um, some scientists consider plastic to be sort of a forever thing. It sort of never really breaks down into, into things that can be used by the environment. So while some plastics are considered biodegradable, so sometimes you can get like a plastic thing and it's like, oh, put it in your green bin or something like that. Um, tiny particles can still be found in our environment and those can cause harm. And those non-biodegradable ones, they last even longer, up to those thousands of years. But we're not, we don't really know yet. Plastic is a fairly new um, invention. We just started it not too long ago in, in the 1900s. So it, we don't really know how long it will last, but we are working on it as scientists are working on to see uh, if we can figure out ways to get rid of it faster. All right, let's do another question. And last one. So microplastics, those are those tiny pieces of plastic that bigger pieces of plastic break down into. They have been found in aquatic and land animals. So inside has been found inside their bodies. You think, yeah? You think, no? Does plastic just stay in the environment, maybe near plants as litter that we can see? Does it enter our bodies in any way or animals' bodies in any way? What do we think? Hmm. So this is actually true. So microplastics have been found in the gut, so in the stomach of a lot of things, in the tissues, so like even in their muscles, and in the lungs of all types in, of animals, including us. So we are animals and we are also impacted by the negative effects of plastics. Now, before we uh, move on and think more about what we can do, thanks for bringing up those questions, Sarah. I wanted to show you a little bit more about microplastics and what they really look like. I have a microscope set up out here. I'm just gonna bring it out. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a, a sand sample that I collected from the beach right here um, and I want to show you what's in it and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So I'm going to turn my camera around so you can see me um, as I talk um, but I'm also going to bring up my microplastics as well. Oops, make this a little smaller. 
So how did you all do on that quiz? Sometimes we think we know lots about plastics. Sometimes we're learning new things about it because as I mentioned, plastics are still a new thing. So here I am. It's right on this rock. Uh, hopefully you can hear me, Sarah. Just let me know if I need to move a little closer to the camera. Uh, but you can bring up the sand cam. I'm gonna put this down a little bit so you can see me a little better. There we go. So this is my microscope that I have set up here. There we go. All right. So this is my little portable microscope that I have, and I'm looking at the sample. I just dug up a piece of sand from the beach here, and we're going to see what's in here. All right. So, of course, we have lots and lots of sand, all these little particles. I'm going to try to focus this a little bit for you. And speak a little louder since you're a little further away. So this is our sand. Now sand, you can see have these little particles, uh, all these little silica, all these little rocks in them. There's lots of things that we can find in sand. Now sand is home to a lot of things. So some insects will live there. Um, but also things will use sand to find food. So there's often, especially when it's in the water more, there's often little things in sand, like little insects, little uh, pieces of food that things will want to eat, like birds, like those uh, seagulls or terns that we just saw, or geese more likely, or swans. But so when I'm looking at the sand, you can see that there are lots of particles of different size. But I want you, as soon as you see something that you think may be plastic, I want you to just raise your hand in your classroom. Let's see if we can find any plastic in here. All right. Do we see any plastic yet? So this is actually our first piece of plastic. This big ball here is what we call a nurdle. Funny name, a nurdle. And a nurdle is a little tiny piece of plastic uh, that is used to make different things. So a bunch of nurdles will be melted down to make anything made of plastic. That's our first form of plastic. Um, microplastics, I should say, are any sort of plastics that are smaller than five millimeters. Uh, so if we're thinking about our units, um, five millimeter, millimeters is pretty small, but this little nurdle is a microplastic. Now you may think, how did that microplastic, how did that nurdle get here if it's used in manufacturing? That's an excellent question. So people don't call, go around with nurdles in their pockets, uh, but oftentimes they get, maybe they uh, fall off of um, boats or sometimes they fall off of trucks or sometimes they, uh, whenever the manufacturing facility is, they enter the ecosystem and then they get moved and often get washed up in, uh, off of beaches. All right, let's take a look for some more things in here. How about this? Is this a microplastic or is it plastic? So this is actually a shell and there are a lot of ducks or aquatic birds that would eat some um, things like shells in order to get some meat off of them. If it's like a mussel, for example. So you can tell that it's kind of hard to tell what is plastic and what is not, especially if you're an animal that may not know better. Let's go a little further. Janelle. While we are looking at, in, uh, for different plastics in there, we have a question about what the yellow parts are in the sand there. Oh, okay, yeah. So these are just um, other minerals, pieces of rock or the silica in the sand. So all those yellow little pieces, they do look like they could be something unnatural, but those are natural pieces of our sand. So sand can come in, um, yeah, all these little pieces can come in a few different colors. But the next piece of plastic I'm gonna show you is actually an unnatural color that we can find. So often when we're looking for plastics, we're looking for those unnatural colors. So it's a good thing that you actually thought about 
uh, those orange pieces because orange could be in a natural color depending on what we're looking at. But this is what I'm going to show you next. So this bright red, definitely in a natural color. Um, and this one's actually not a microplastic because it's too big. We call it macroplastics when it's this size. But it is pretty small still. And it looks like it's from a bottle or a cap or something like that. The last piece I'm going to show you is one that um, we see a lot. So this is a fragment of styrofoam. So I don't know if you've ever had like um, packaging that comes with styrofoam and you like break it and it goes off into these little tiny pieces. A lot of our plastics uh, that we can find in the environment are fragments or pieces of bigger pieces of plastic. Uh, so like the styrofoam and these pieces of plastic, all of the pieces that we saw today, they don't break down um, and go back into the environment. Like say a uh, piece of wood would break down because something's eating it or um, decomposing it. Nope, these plastics, they just uh, get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get minuscule, tiny, itty bitty pieces of plastic that may end up in things like your lungs or in your tissues because they can pass through those barriers in your body. So they don't biodegrade uh, the same way natural things do. So I'm going to turn off my sand cam now. And remember, this is from taking a handful of plastic from the beach. So it's not like something that is hard to find. We can find microplastics all over the place. All right, let me try my computer again, <laughs> my cooler, and then I'm gonna turn us around so we can talk a little bit more. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed, well, I don't know if enjoyed seeing that, but I hope that seeing those microplastics made you think a little bit because here we are looking at microplastics and we are learning about microplastics, first of all, or plastics in general. So we have a little bit more knowledge than say an animal who doesn't know anything about plastic. Um, and we have that discernment with our brains to be able to make those decisions of whether or not the things that we're eating is plastic or not, but that's not always the case with animals. So when we're talking about the harms of plastic in our environment, what are we talking about? Why can plastic be dangerous? Well, if it's in our bodies, we don't know the health effects of that. Or, but we do know it's harmful for a lot of the animals around us. So when they eat that plastic, especially if they eat it and it fills up their gut, they may think that they're eating lots of food that's good for them. Uh, and they're getting lots of nutrition, but they're not. And they can actually end up starving, which is actually really sad. So we don't want to, we want to make sure that those animals are not eating the plastic. What else can happen? Well, larger pieces of plastic, not those microplastics, they often get tangled around lots of, of, of different types of animals. So fish can be found, uh, can get caught in sort of those rings that hold um, bottles together. Um, or sometimes plastic bags can get stuck on other animals or some things can get impaled by a plastic fork. So that's called entanglement. When, entangle when an animal uh, is somehow getting all wrapped up or uh, hurt by the plastic around there. So things can eat it and things can get entangled with it. But also the other thing that happens is if one animal eats a piece of plastic but then a predator comes along and eats five of those animals that have plastic in them. Now that predator, even though it didn't eat any plastic itself, it has that plastic in it too. So the reaches are far and wide of the plastic are in our environment. And we wanna make sure that we are doing what we can to reduce this plastic because humans are the ones that made this problem. We love things being convenient. We love things being easy. We love new and shiny things and that's okay, but we also have to think about what it's doing to our environment and maybe some alternatives that we can do instead. So one thing that we can do is we can clean up the plastic that we find in our environment. So I have a picture that I'm going to show you. Uh, this amount of plastic is from one cleanup day that took less than an hour along the beaches of Lake Ontario, actually in Mississauga. 
Um, so you can see all the different types of plastic that they found on this beach. There's plastic eggs, there are um, forks, there are little pieces of things. There are so many different types of things that are found because people littered. So A, don't litter, but B, if you do see plastic, you can pick it up uh, and you can do cleanups. Cleanups are a great way to get out with family and friends or schoolmates um, and clean up the environment and help not only your immediate environment, but also that plastic won't then move to other places um, and impact that place as well. Thanks for bringing up that picture. So we can clean up things. All right, what else can we do? Let's think. What can we do to help beat plastic pollution? We mentioned that plastic is everywhere. So it's not an overnight thing to just stop using plastic. Um, it's gonna take a long time, but I have faith in us that we can do it in, in a lot of different ways. So what can we do to reduce our plastic or what are some things that you've already done to reduce plastic in your everyday lives? One simple thing, you can use a reusable water bottle. So I know that a lot of people already have that, which is excellent. I see it all the time when I go into schools. Love seeing that. Reusable water bottles, even if they're made of plastic, at least if they are being reused often um, and you don't have to buy a new plastic water bottle every other week, then you're doing a good thing. So sometimes we just have to look at those three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, uh, but also rethink. Um, and we look at those things uh, to help us reduce our plastic. So if we were using things often enough, then we can uh, help reduce how much plastic is being produced and then wasted. Anything else? Well, while you're thinking of that, I'm gonna make one last point about some things that are happening globally, to, or at least in our, in our country, to help beat that plastic pollution. Earlier this year, the government of Canada um, banned certain single-use plastics. So single-use plastics are those plastics that we get when we're out at the store, uh, we're eating things, or we purchase something and we get a bag, and then we use it just for that one single use, and then we toss it away. Uh, so there's a number of different single-use plastics that were actually banned for production and use in Canada. And we'll talk a little bit about why we're still seeing them, but uh, if you'll bring up the picture of what uh, those things are. Excellent, thank you. So our plastic bags are one of those single-use items that are now banned. Um, we have some plastic utensils, so those plastic forks or spoons and knives. Um, those rings that go around uh, cans, those are also banned. Those are actually very harmful for our environment once they get into the, our habitats around us because lots of things get stuck in them. Um, we have stir sticks. So stir sticks, uh, if you go and you, a lot of y'all are too young for coffee, but your teachers will know this, or you may know it from your parents, or even if you go out and get another sort of sweet drink from a store, those plastic stir sticks that you use to mix up your drinks, you can't use those anymore. Um, there are a number of different takeout containers, including those styrofoam containers. So we saw a piece of styrofoam in our microplastics container. Um, those are now banned and plastic straws, the bendy ones or the straight ones. Those are now banned. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, Janelle, I went to, I went out on the weekend and I definitely still got a plastic fork and I definitely still got a plastic bag. You're right. So there are still some out there right now. Um, the ban is for newly produced things. So people are just using up stuff that they already have. And you'll probably see these things for a little while longer. But once they're all used up, um, then we'll start seeing some really cool and innovative ways that we can help reduce our plastic pollution. Because people have to be innovative. They have to think more about what we can use instead of these things. So we have reusable bags. People uh, can use metal or sometimes silicone that sort of uh, lasts longer or just any sort of reusable utensils or stir sticks. Lots of things made out of cardboard or paper products that can be recycled. Um, and then of course, if you're doing containers, you can bring your own containers or sometimes they're also made of um, uh, papers or materials that wouldn't break down in our environment. So this is just one way. And to be honest, it is just a small way that uh, we can reduce our plastic. Because as we're looking around our rooms, remember there's tons of things made of plastic. 
But as long as we're thinking about how we can reduce those things, um, not only for ourselves and for our immediate environment, but for the whole world. So when we throw out our plastic, uh, sometimes it just stays in dumps that are near us, but sometimes it gets shipped to other places and other countries and they have to deal with our garbage, which is also not good uh, because it's still impacting people and places and things. Um, so we have to really think about what we can do and i know a lot of this was sort of doom and gloom kind of sad uh, but i am ending this on excitement because i know there is a lot of innovation happening across the planet to help make sure that our planet is livable not only today but for generations to come and that includes thinking about how we use plastic and guess what you're all a part of that as well because you are going to be growing up in this world along with me and all your teachers. Um, and we all have to think about new ways of doing things. So I'm really excited to see what our future holds and what sort of really cool ideas we come up with in order to help our planet and help ourselves, but also still have things like live streams uh, where all of my material is made of plastic. Maybe it's made of something else or something that's a little more sustainable. Um, but with that, I am going to say, Thank you for being here. I'm going to end our talk about um, about plastics. If you do have to get going, uh, thank you for being here. I really enjoyed our time together, and I hope that you're able to um, learn more about plastic and think about what you can do in order to help our planet. Uh, if you can stick around, we're going to get into some questions and answers in just right now. Uh, so I'm going to invite Sarah up. Uh, and if there's any questions in the chat, then you can uh, ask them and we will get to them. Oh, sorry, Sarah, you're muted. Oops. Uh, thank you, Janelle. Uh, we do have some questions in the chat um, that I will definitely ask you right now. We also have some um, ideas that I think would be cool to share as well that are in the chat. Ooh, yeah, I'm um, excited. So first, uh, I have a question for you, Janelle. I'm very excited to participate in some litter cleanups. Is there anything that I should consider about uh, how to be safe when participating in litter cleanups? Absolutely, yeah, that's an excellent question. So when you're doing litter uh, cleanups, a really good tool that I actually saw at the dollar store not too long ago, so it's be becoming more accessible, but you can get uh, litter, uh, like the pickers, uh, so they're just like long things with sort of grabby things at the end. You can pick up garbage that way. Um, and also gloves are a good thing. So you, if you don't have those pickers, uh, you can put on a pair of gloves so that you don't have to touch uh, some trash that you may not want to touch with your hands. Uh, always bring a bag with you so that you can carry it easier. Um, and of course, if there's sharp or dangerous things like needles or things that you don't want to touch, it is okay to leave them there and you can call um, your local municipality uh, your um, or waste cleanup or if there's park staff around, you can call them over and they can uh, clean that up for you. So, of course, always stay safe when you're doing these things. Um, and if you're cleaning up near the road, uh, just watch for cars. If you have a vest or bright clothing, that's excellent as well. Awesome. Thank you very much. Our next question comes from Raya, who asked if... Um, they can see those little plastic bits with a magnifying glass if they don't have a microscope camera and want to explore the beach where they am or are those bits too small okay so let me show you let me get my plastic so some of them are going to be too small to see with our eyes um or even a micro magnifying glass but the ones that i showed you are actually we can actually see them with our eyes so this is the size of the nurdle that i showed you uh, so there are things that we can see with our eyes. The piece of styrofoam, let me see if I can find it. Oh, it's going to blow away in the wind. But yeah, there are things that we can see with our eyes. This macro plastic, so I said it's bigger than our five milliliters. That's how big it is. So it's still pretty small, um, but that's the size of that. So you, you can definitely go out and get your magnifying glass and see some of those really small things. Um, but if you want to get like really into it, yeah, a microscope is really fun to sort of look at all those things. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, we have some comments in the chat that I wanted to share with just some ideas on uh, how we can kind of be part of this using less plastic in our daily lives. So Raya uh, also had some suggestions. They said um, they can refill their, plas their pasta and cereal containers from a bulk store instead of buying new um, 
cereal or, or um, pasta containers, which is really a cool idea. Um, so I thought I would share that one. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So there's lots more uh, bulk stores coming up around the place, around our cities. Uh, so those are definitely cool to check out. Awesome. And the one last suggestion that was in here was that Raya also said that they could be the one to help their parents by being the one to remember to bring those reusable bags with them so that the, their parents don't have to think about that extra step uh, when they're when they're preparing to go grocery shopping. So I thought that that was a really cool idea to share as well. Yeah, for sure. So when we're talking about plastic and how to reduce things, we may think, oh, we're just kids, like we can't really do anything. But there's lots that you can do, um, not only at your schools, but yeah, advocating with your grown-ups that are at home bring your reusable bag or let's use reusable water bottles stop buying those plastic ones um or even you still have a voice and if you're really passionate about this you can go to higher levels of government and say hey listen this is my planet and i don't like what we're doing um and uh suggest to the government or your mayor or your uh, counselors that are nearby of things that you'd want to do to help uh, the environment around you. Awesome. Thank you very much. And that's all that we have in the chat today, Janelle. So thank you very much for everything you shared with us today. It was really exciting to learn about the different uh, ways that we can see plastic in our environment and how we can kind of take action in our own lives as well. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. I will say that uh, Thank you for joining us on our last live stream of the school year. It is June. You've made it to the end of the school year. I'm happy that you could spend the, uh, this time with us. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your school year. But also, if you're missing us in the summer, make sure you come out to some of our parks or at least go out to the parks near your homes. You can enjoy the environment around there, learn to love it, um, and hopefully be able to take part in some things that um are helpful for our environment as well so we will see you next year uh keep an eye out for some of the live streams we have going on but other than that enjoy the rest of your day thank you very much bye everyone